Hi, and welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course. And in this module, we're gonna be looking at the visual called As Timeline. Now, the As Timeline visual is really a Gantt chart. So if you've worked with Gantt charts, you likely at least have the idea of how this works. But the purpose of the As Timeline is to plan or track equipment or people, or maybe anything else that you wanna track. And it gives you the ability to visualize a start and end date on a single visual and see if there's any gaps or overlaps that might cause issues. And so it'll be able to help you present that data there easily with inside of Power BI. So you can see the usefulness of that, of course, is if you have one person assigned to do two different things at the same time, hopefully it would draw your attention to that and you would be able to determine if that is even possible. So pretty interesting visual. You likely have seen this type of visual in other places. Let's take a look at how the as timeline works in the scenario I've come up for with for you. All right, so to get started here, of course, we need to start by pulling in some data. So I'm going to go up to the Get Data section here and select Excel. And we're going to be pulling in a spreadsheet here or a workbook called Project Status. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and choose Open. We're going to find there's a small table that I have in here, a uh, spreadsheet called Progress that has a table in it that has some information about the data that we want to work with here. So you can see whether what kind of track it would be on, whether it's production, testing, development, or backlog the actual task, a start and end date, and then some other information in here that will be useful as well. We're gonna go ahead and hit load to bring that into the Power BI desktop. And once it gets loaded in here, you'll see it show up on the field list on the right-hand side, and that will go bring in our visual that we wanna use. So I'm gonna to go to the marketplace up at the top ribbon. I'll select from marketplace. And as we search here, we should be able to find the as timeline. We spell it right. We'll see that visual shown at the very top here, and we can select the as timeline visual. And again, the idea here is to be able to see a Gantt type visual. And so we'll select add to add that into our visualization pane shown on the right hand side. You'll see it show up right here. And we can add that as timeline visual here, and we can start to add different data elements to it. So what we want to do is we want to add a, uh, the task column to the entity here. And you can see that there is some additional documentation that pops up when you do that, which is pretty helpful. Uh, we're also going to add in to the category section here. We're going to add in the track that we're focused on. Okay. And then we'll simply add the start and end date to the start and end date columns here. All right. Now we'll want to make sure that they go under the right place. So let's actually shift those down to end date and shift that down to start date. It looks like it went under the incorrect location here. And then the other thing you may notice here is it's a little dis uh, discombobulated, I guess is one way to say it and that it doesn't properly line up our dates. And the reason why that is happening is because our dates are being brought through as hierarchies right now. If you look over in the field list, you can see start date being brought through as a hierarchy. We can simply change that from the date hierarchy just to start date by, by itself. And we'll do the same thing for the end date as well. And then that should more properly visualize that information here. All right. So we've got the beginnings of our Gantt chart showing here. Let's actually walk you through some of the format settings and then I'll show you some of the interaction that you have within, within the visual as well. So let's go over to the format paintbrush here. And underneath the format section, we're gonna start by going underneath the display settings and show you a few of the things that you have available to you here. Uh, one is you can actually adjust the height. So if I wanted to, I could bump up the height quite a bit. Maybe I make it a little taller if you wanted to, you can certainly do that. You can also adjust the length of which the, the labels have the ability to display. So the labels on the left-hand side if I wanted to, I could actually lower or increase the amount of length that's allowed to display. So if I put something like 10, you'll see that it actually decreases the amount of space that it has. I'll bump that back up to where it was. You'll also notice that it's uh, in the labels on the left-hand side that it's combining the actual task with the, the items that we have in our legend here. So our track and our task are combined together. So you can see cube design, backlog, design data warehouse, schema. Uh, there's nothing that's associated with that. You can see, uh, or it's kind of falling off the screen actually. You can see uh, dim date load production is has a little dash in between it. So what you can do is you can actually change the separator that's shown in between those because right now it's showing a little dash in between our uh, track and our task. And so what you can do is you can actually change it to a comma if you'd prefer. So you can see very tiny. It's hard to see here. We'll make that larger here in a moment. You can change that so you can see it a little larger if you wanted to here in a few moments but uh, you have the ability to change the separator that's being shown there. I'll show this again once we increase the size of this so it's a little easier to see. You can also change the size of the legend font. So if you wanted to, you could bump up the legend font. That's the font that you see up top here. You could bump that up some. I'm actually gonna revert that back to how it was. It's perfectly fine how it was. And then let's go to the next properties here because under the next properties here, you'll see the axis legend. Here's where you can affect the X and the Y axes and how you can actually change the 
indicators of this. So if I wanted to increase the font size of the y-axis, you can see I can bump that up, and now you can actually see the comma separator here a little bit more. And then you know, of course, that we saw just a few moments ago under the display settings, I can change that to a hyphen. I can change it to an underscore if I wanted to. You can see that right there. I'm going to leave it as a comma. Okay. You can also change the x-axis that you see going across here horizontally. Uh, and you can change the number of uh, indicators that's showing up, the tick marks here. Right now, it's showing uh, number five shown for the ticks. But if you increase that, say to something like eight, you'll see that additional data points will be shown for each of the values that you have. You can, of course, increase or decrease the font size of that. So if I wanted to bump up the font size, you can see that down here. I'm going to leave it at 12-point font, though, so that way it's not smooshing into each other here. So the x-axis ticks allows you to increase the number of ticks that you see in each. And you can get really out of hand with this. If I set something like 15, you'll see there's too many to actually read what's going on with the data. So I'm going to leave it at something like 8. All right, let's work our way a little bit further down underneath category colors. I'm not going to make any changes here, but you can certainly change the colors if, that are appearing on the chart if you wanted to. So you can adjust these. I'm going to revert this back here in a moment. But just note you can come in here and you can modify the colors that are shown per each of the categories that you've selected. I'll revert that back. All right, that's the category color section. Now underneath behavior, you'll see there's a few things that are kind of interesting here. And I want to draw your attention to the dim inventory load two rows that you see here, the two lines that you see. You can see dim inventory load development and dim inventory load production. Those are on two separate lines here. You'll see there's an option for stacked, which you can turn on or off. And if I turn it off, you'll notice that dim inventory now lands on the same line. So it's up to you whether or not you want to see it that way, because keep in mind, you do have the legend up top, so you don't necessarily have to have the, the uh, task itself, or, or the track, I should say, show up on a separate line with inside the Gantt chart. You can actually, if you wanted to, have them stacked on top of each other or have them uh, show as separate values. And really what you're stacking is both the task and the, the track here in this case. So I'm going to turn off track, and then I can actually see those show up on the same line item because it's not stacking the category as part of this as well. You can also turn on or off the animation. If you're not sure what the animation is on this chart, notice this. When I turn on or off stacked, notice how it kind of animates the chart. If you turn off animation and I do the same thing, you'll notice it no longer kind of loads it in that smooth manner. It just kind of loads it immediately. So that's up to you uh, whether or not you want to have the animation on. I haven't seen it affect performance a ton, so uh, you're welcome to keep that on if you like the animation piece. The other option that you have right now is a select tool. The select tool is interesting because what the select tool will allow you to do is compare values vertically. So say, for example, I want to see all of the values that cross this fax sales load because I want to see what's going to impact it. If you triple click, meaning one, two, three, click three times, you'll notice it highlights all of the values that cross over with my red section here, the one that's called fax sales load. So I can see the one above it selected, and the way, one way up on the top here selected as well because they cross paths with it. The regular selection works like this. If you just click something, you'll see it selects this one and nothing that's cross, crossing it. But again, if you do a triple click, one, two, three, there it goes. Okay, now it's working for me. Now it's showing all the values that are crossing the red, and it looks like this one on the very top here must not cross it. So the only thing that I'm showing here is you have the option to turn that off. If you don't like that selection tool, you can turn it off. And then anytime you try and triple, triple click, it's not going to do anything. You can only select single clicks on these values now. So that is an option that you can turn on or off. It's up to you. You can also turn off the legend here. So if you want, you can turn off the legend that was appearing on the top. I think it's pretty important to see the legend, so I'm going to turn that back on. And then uh, if we go a little bit further down, we got one more section here. You have this entity separator, where if you turn on the entity separator, you'll see that it puts these nice lines in between each of the entities that you have. Uh, if you like that, great. If you don't like it, turn it off. You can also increase the font size of that, or the font, um, I should say, the, the height of the uh, line itself. So you can increase the line size. You can also change the color of it if you wanted to for some reason. You can change that here as well. I actually prefer not to have this on at all, so I'm going to turn this off because I kind of like the view without the lines at all. A few other things that are interesting to note here, you can resort the way these look. Right now it's sorted alphabetically. You could select this, and it'll actually sort it uh, in different ways. So here, in this case, I'm actually seeing which ones are going to occur first are showing up in the top left, which might be the better way to be able to view this, because then I can kind of go down and see uh, where these values are going to cross paths, and I can see it sorted in the order of the date. Uh, so it's up to you how you would like to sort it, but you do have the option to do that just by selecting the either X or Y axis. That's really it for this one. It's a pretty smooth little visual. I actually really like this one. 
Not too complicated, but again, here's the kind of field you need to have. You need to have some kind of an entity. That's what we're tracking here as a task. That's what we see on the y-axis here. And then if you need some kind of category, or you can optionally have a category. In our case, our category is the track, which is production, development, testing, or backlog. And then you must have a start and end date. So you got to have a start and end date here to be able to see where a task begins and where a task ends. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this visual. It's a nice little smooth one. And look forward to showing you our next custom visual in our next module.